All right, folks, welcome back. It's time for another 308 video. And we're going to look at the differences between large primer brass and small primer brass. And in the small primer brass, we're going to look at the difference between a large flash hole and a small flash hole. Now we're shooting 308, but I think the results will apply to other cartridges. And this video is really a continuation of some videos I made like a year and a half ago in 6.5 Creedmoor. We were having some problems with hang fires. We were shooting small primer brass and we ran into some hang fires. I did four videos kind of investigating that situation and looking into different primers and looking into different powders and trying to understand what was causing poor uh, powder ignition in those circumstances. And this is really a continuation of that. And hopefully this will build on what we learned in that little video series. I've got a playlist with those four videos in it. This will be added to that playlist because it's really the same subject. So here in 308, I picked up some Lapua Palma brass. This brass uses small rifle primers and it has a small flash hole. Now I screwed up in a previous video and I accidentally used a resizing die with a decapping pin that was too big for the flash holes. So I kind of screwed up the brass by punching out the flash holes and making them larger than they came. And since then, what I've done is I went ahead and drilled them out. What I found was that a 5 64th drill bit fit through the flash hole of the large rifle primer brass just about perfect. So I've taken some of this Palma brass and I drilled out the flash hole with this here drill bit. And then I used a flash hole deburring tool to make sure that the, all of the burrs were removed. So that leaves us with Palma brass with small primer, small flash holes. I've got the ones I drilled out, which are small primer, large flash holes. And I've also got some standard Lapua 308 brass that, that uses large primers. So those are the three things I want to test against one another. So in the, in the previous four videos on this subject, we learned that it really comes down to most importantly primer selection. In, in the Creedmoor, what we found was the CCI number 41 primers did a really good job. And another good choice was the Remington 7.5. Those two seem to be our best performers as far as avoiding hang fires and misfires when using small primers. We also found that the s &B small rifle primer was clearly the worst. And this is what we used for kind of the worst case scenario. And this is what we're gonna to use today to try and induce some hang fires in 308 with these small rifle primer brass. Now I'm not saying these are bad primers, like we've, we've used them in other applications and they've been okay, but they're just, they're not as hot. Like I think this seven and a half and the CCI 41, these are just hotter primers. These aren't quite so hot. So when you get into certain situations, these can cause some problems. And that's what we're hoping to do today is cause some problems. The other thing we learned in the previous four videos is the most important thing beyond primer selection was case fill. If you got a nice full case of powder, you're generally going to get good ignition. And if you've got a whole bunch of excess case capacity, ignition is going to be a problem. So those are the two things we want to try and do today. We want to use the s &B primer and we want to use a powder with a minimum charge that's not going to fill up a bunch of the case. So here's the test I've got planned. We're going to shoot the 168 grain Sierra Match King. This is what we shot in the last video. The groups were great. Everything was great. Good bullet. The first powder I want to test with is IMR4895. This is what we shot in the last video. We shot up to 43.0 grains. I want to shoot 43.0 grains again. That is a nice full case of powder, like just about 100% case fill. So with 43 grains of IMR4895, we're going to see if this s &B primer gives us reliable ignition. I think it will. Now the problem is I, do, I don't have any s &B large rifle primers. So for the large rifle primer brass, I'm gonna use CCI number 200s, just a standard large rifle primer. To be honest, my selection of large rifle primers isn't that extensive. I've got the CCI 200s, I've got some Winchester WLRs, and that's about it. So I just figured we'd go with the CCIs. I think even with the s &B primer and large rifle, I don't know, maybe it's a hot primer. I have no idea, I haven't tested it, I haven't used it, but even if, let's say it's a weak primer, I think you would still get good ignition. I don't know. The large rifle primer test is really just kind of there as our standard. We wanna get velocity, standard deviation, and accuracy information from a large rifle primer test just as kind of a baseline. What we're really after is finding out the performance of those small rifle primer brass 
and seeing how they compare to the large rifle stuff. The second powder is going to be H335, and we're gonna be shooting a minimum charge right at the starting charge, which is 39.0 grains. I looked on the Hodgson website, which has data with the 168 grain Sierra Match King. I also looked on the Sierra Load data, and that 39.0 grain is just above what they show for starting charges, both, both sources. So this load, this 39.0 grain load, it doesn't fill a lot of the case. Well, I mean, it fills a lot of the case. It's probably 60% or something, but there's a whole lot of excess capacity left in the case. Another thing is that H335 is a ball powder, a spherical powder, while IMR4895 is a single base extruded powder. So just by their nature, IMR4895 is easier to ignite than H335. We observed that in some of the previous videos on this uh, subject. But honestly, the differences between single base extruded, double base extruded, and spherical powders wasn't as big of a difference as we saw with primer selection and case fill. But still, I wanted to go ahead and use a ball powder as our worst case scenario sort of powder. Now, H335 is a great powder for crying out loud. I'm not trying to crap on H335 or even the S&B primer. I'm just saying that we're trying to create a scenario where these components as a combination can result in ignition issues. And I'm not even sure whether we're gonna be able to see anything today. I don't know, we'll see. So that's pretty much it. Did I cover everything? I think I did. Did I show you the load data? Hopefully I did. It's pretty straightforward. I wanna shoot 10 shot groups with each powder and each type of brass. So total of 60 shots. And the reason I wanna do 10 shot groups is that should give us you know, better information as far as accuracy and especially like standard deviation numbers. So we're going with 10 shot groups today. Now I've always heard like with this Lapua brass and the small flash holes, the thought behind it is that the smaller flash hole concentrates that flame, that flare, that whatever coming out of the primer into a smaller, more intense spot on the powder. So I think the whole point of the small flash hole is to get better ignition with small primers. So I'm really interested to see whether we see any difference between the small flash hole and large flash hole with the S&B primers. So that's it. Like we're not even gonna cover any reloading today. We're just gonna go ahead and hit the range. All 60 of our test loads, I tried my very best to make them exact clones of one another. All of the brass was sized with the exact same full length resizing die at the exact same time, same exact lot number of bullets and powder and primers. Everything is exactly the same. I seeded all of the bullets with the exact same bullet seating die setting at the exact same time, like they were all loaded at the same time. So any variation between them should have to do with those primers and those flash holes. So that's it. Let's get on the range. Okay, so it's time to get started. I've got a target at 100 yards. The dots down there are one inch in diameter. The gun is an Aero Precision M5E1 setup with a 20 inch Krieger barrel with a one in 11 twist. I'm using a Silencer Co. Omega suppressor and a six to 24 by 50 Vortex Viper PST. Now this is a different scope than I had on this gun in the last video. The, the last video I was shooting the Vortex Strike Eagle, it was giving me some focusing problems and come to find out that focusing knob seems to be coming loose on me. So I swapped in the, uh, the PST. Hopefully that'll work a little bit better today. Another thing I changed about this gun since the last video was I pulled out the, the trigger I was using, which was a pretty heavy trigger and swapped in a LaRue MBT trigger. So hopefully I don't have any bump fire problems today with this lighter trigger. We'll see how it goes. The heavier trigger was getting on my nerves. So just wanted something a little bit lighter. Velocity is coming from our lab radar chronograph. So let's get started. We're gonna start out with the boring stuff, or at least I hope it's boring. This is the IMR 4895 loads with plenty of case fill, and I really don't expect to have any problems at all with these. This is kind of our baseline test. So I'm gonna load up all 10 in my Magpul P bag, and let's see if they group. The gun is warm. Like I, I shot seven rounds through it to get this uh, scope zeroed. So the gun's warm, so we shouldn't have any cold barrel conditions affecting our test. First up, large rifle primers, the standard Lapua brass.
Okay, next up is the exact same load in the small primer palma brass with the large flash holes. All right, so, so far so good. We lost almost 30 feet per second there in the switch from the large CCI primer to the small s &B primer. Our standard deviation tightened up a good bit down to 7.7. .7. So our last test with IMR4895 is the s &B small primers with the small flash holes. Let's see how these guys do. Okay, so that's our baseline. We lost about 30 feet per second switching from the large CCI to the small s &B primers, and the large flash hole and the small flash hole were within three feet per second of one another, and the large flash hole had the better standard deviation. Interesting. So I'm gonna let the gun cool down a few minutes, and then we'll move on to the real test, which is H335. All right, so now it's time for things to get interesting, or at least I expect them to get interesting. We're switching over to our minimum charge of H335. We're gonna start with the large rifle primer. So this, these first 10 shots, I don't expect to have any problems. I didn't mention the weather today. It's extremely hot. This is the middle of the summer. The air temperature is in the upper 80s. And in the previous videos with 6.5 Creedmoor on this subject, we did a little bit of playing around with temperature, but it was extremely cold at that time. But even trying to shoot warm rounds and see if we could notice some difference between warm and hot, there didn't seem to be a ton of change. So temperature might be a factor here, but we're just not really accounting for it today. So let's get started. All right, now we're moving on to the small primers. This is where things should get interesting. The s and small primer with a large flash hole. We're watching for hang fires and misfires. So let's see what happens. Okay, the round did not go off. Let's give it a minute to cook here. Yep, it's been like 30 seconds. Nothing's happened. So I grabbed that round and looked at the primer really quick and it looks like the primer strike was good, but I, yeah, I didn't feel like holding it in my hand. You never know what could happen. <laughs> so let's move on to the next one. All right, distinct hang fire that time. Same thing that time, hang fire. Another hang fire. Okay, so we had one misfire and nine very distinct hang fires. 
Our standard deviation went to garbage, 37.0. Our extreme spread was 129, just awful. So this is exactly what we're ex we were expecting. This is exactly what we designed into this test was to see this sort of result. Now, the final question is whether these small flash holes in the Lapua brass will help this situation. So that's the last group, small primers, S and B primers with the small flash holes. Let's see what happens. Hang fire. All right, so 10 shots and we had 10 hang fires. So this turned out exactly as we expected. Let's get back to the bench, talk it all out. So at this point, we generally have a look at the brass for pressure signs, but there, there was nothing to see. All the brass looked great today. But what I did do is I tore apart the one misfire to be 100% sure that the primer went off, and it did. This is exactly what we saw in the previous videos with 6.5 Creedmoor. The primer went off, and if you look at the powder, the powder down at the bottom of the case near the flash hole gets this yellowish color and it all clumps together. And this one had a particularly huge clump. So the primer went off, the flash made it to the powder, we just didn't get ignition. So let's have another look at the groups here. On the top row with our IMR 4895 load where all of them went off no problem, I'm not sure what to think about this difference in accuracy. Like our groups got significantly better with the small primer brass. One thing I'll say, the large primer Lapua brass I was using has got some miles on it. Like I've had it for years. It's got, I don't know, 10 or 15 firings on it. I I'm not sure the last time I annealed it. So maybe, I don't know, th there are some other factors that maybe contributed to the accuracy difference. Like I, I would feel a whole lot better saying that, yep, small primers are more accurate if that was brand new large primer brass. And it just wasn't. Another thing is the velocity difference, right? It was 30 or 40 feet per second faster in velocity. So if we dropped that charge down a little bit and got the velocities matching up, maybe that would tighten up the groups. Maybe we just landed in a really bad node or whatever. I don't know. Now the large flash hole versus small flash hole, similar size group, the velocity was the same, you know, they were within three feet per second of one another. And the small flash hole had a little bit higher standard deviation. Now the funny thing is they both had the exact same extreme spread. So extreme spread was 28 feet per second and then the standard deviations were 7.7 .7 and 10.4. So with a 10 shot sample size, I'm not sure if that difference in standard deviation is significant. I think what we probably need is a load where we've got really amazing standard deviations and then compare them with that load. And at that point, this barrel's still pretty new. We're still just kind of getting started playing around with this 308. I don't really have a good go-to load that I know will have extremely small standard deviation numbers. So we might have to revisit that later on. Now with H335 on the bottom row, things got a little more interesting. The large primer, no problem whatsoever. Good ignition on all 10 shots. And then with the small primer, all 20 shots were bad. We had one misfire and 19 hang fires. So no surprise that standard deviations went to garbage, the groups got bigger, and it was all bad. So where do we go from here? I've been kind of trying to think this over here for the last few days since I shot these rounds. And I think we need one more video because I really haven't determined much of anything on the small flash hole versus large flash hole debate. So I think in the next video, we need to take this H335 load. We know that the minimum charge is terrible. So I need to just start working up. Maybe we shoot half grain increments all the way up to max charge and find out about where it starts reliably igniting the powder and compare that point with the large flash holes versus the small flash holes. That's probably gonna be a lot of work and a lot of, uh, a lot of rounds to figure out that point with both types of brass, but I think it's worth it. Cause at this point we just, I, you know, I have nothing to really say on the subject of small flash hole versus large flash hole. It's good that so far we've seen similar accuracy. You know, our, our IMR 4895 loads, the group sizes were pretty close to one another. 
So it's not like I've destroyed this brass by screwing up the flash holes. It's still good brass. So that makes me feel a little bit better. I think that's pretty much it. Like, did we cover everything? I think we did. Kind of a little bit boring today. Like it, it, it turned out exactly like we planned, exactly like we predicted. And it's a little bit more fun when, you know, something unexpected happens, but it's a good validation of what we learned in 6.5 Creedmoor. And now we know that it translates to 308. So that's where we'll leave it, folks. I'll see you guys next time.